this whole ah, shin didn't set up on my weld table so we could get get our measurements right. I got marks on my table. Right, let's we'll see if this puppy fits. So we've notched these mounts so we can get this long bolt out. Uh, good thing Daniel saw that because that would have sucked. So now we can measure out our wheelbase and we can tack these on on each side. If our invention works. Invention. Notch piece of metal is invention. <laughs> I made it. Give me the credit. It's my invention. All right. Look at that, look at that, look at that. Perfect, that's some good grinding skills, thank you. Oh, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you zoom like super close? Yeah. Lonnie's uh, got the Ackerman angle on his. Uh, <laughs> on his. It's so uh, that it can uh, move yeah, side to side he, some. He's staying on the geometry. <laughs> Daniel's putting other mounts, so that's the mounts me and Lonnie just made up. Daniel made the lower engine mounts because he had to make a weird bend in them to fit. But we're adding these bars, which are notched on one side, flat on the other, and they'll go in from dead. In between there. So from here. To the frame where it's grinded right there. Yeah, so from there, in there, and that'll just give us another brace. We're trying to think if we should do, you know, take a piece of tube and do a bend in it to connect this to this, connect. It connect. probably doesn't need it for strength. Honestly, it should be strong enough, but it might look cool. And looks are more important than strength, honestly. Yeah, you never want something to be strong but look bad. Yeah. No. You want weak and look awesome. Yeah. That's all that matters. So that's what we do. <laughs> what you got there? Eighty-five and five eighths. So we're we're looking for eighty-five and a half in the pull center. Pull a little tighter. That's eighty-five and a half now. Okay. Do you want to tack this side? Yeah. Mother. Yeah. Okay. Chancho, sometimes grown men wear stretchy pants in their room, just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Pull a hemi. <laughs> hammy. Hammy? It's a hemi. It's a hemi. No oh, gosh. <laughs> Weld much? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll remeasure. Eight, five and a half. Oh, nice. Yeah. Keep, yeah, keep pulling it or pushing it. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Okay, come welder. You know, it's crazy whenever you built this out on, it seemed like so much room and now it's tight again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, measure one more time. This is gonna be a sweet little buggy though. Oh yeah, and it was quick. I mean when you're not building engines and good? Yeah, pull her tight. 85 and a half. Alright, let's check the other side just in case. 85 and a half. Hey! So... Will you just stand up my butt? No. <laughs> uh, we're trying out this old... These are Monroe shocks I bought for my buggy for testing. You want to tack the bottom? Oh, we got to no. sand the paint. We got to sand the paint. Uh, 
we got this Monroe shock. It's just one probably going to be way too soft, but this is like max droop we want because of how much CV we have left, which is none. Uh, our CV at first, we thought we had a problem because our CV wouldn't slide down, and that's because there's so much uh, rust right here. Uh, it wouldn't slide in all the way. It's only getting like half of its movement. So, gosh, man. Sitting in my buggy playing Nintendo on a rain. They got out for school for flooding. We never got stuff like that. A couple times. Global warming. That's what it is. Uh, it went from snow yesterday to downpour rain today. Snow day four. Why you gotta ruin the video? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> So we're trying this Unishock. If it if it feels nice with uh, one, I highly doubt it though, don't you? It's worth a shot. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's going to end up needing two. And it'd be sweet if those Monroes work because it just looks crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hold this on him. No, I want to let it out the jar. Okay, all right. Easy though. Don't be hammer slamming it. <laughs> While he's still right there. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Do you think? What do you think it's gonna do? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's make our guesses. All right. I think it's gonna be perfect. I do not. I think it's gonna be too soft. I think it's gonna bottom out the china. It might. <laughs> I think it's gonna be one thousand great. One thousand great. I'm with uh, this guy. Yay, <laughs> That's positivity we need in this shop. Slow and steady. Slow and quick. And there's some welch crunching. Watch in the eyes. Yeah. It's oh not yeah, it's it. too soft. It's okay. not gonna catch it at all. Okay, so if we can find a way to add a second one, because we don't got much real estate, uh, we can just cut this shock tab off and put our new ones on, and just we'll have to. Only bad thing we'll have to move that one over too. Yeah. So okay, we'll get to cutting and grinding, and we'll show you what happens. So I have all these stainless pieces that was left over from building my buggy exhaust. So I took a few 45s because that's really all I had left out of the kit. And we are going to weld up this little snake of an exhaust up to the muffler. So Daniel's going to tack it and I'll pull it off and fully weld it. go-kart is uh, ready other than one thing so uh, with most of our buggies go power sports throttle cables aren't long enough because they're made for just standard go-karts so unlike the Tau Tau Arrow and the blue v-twin go-kart we take take we taken we took in took in taken an outlet box kind of like this and we basically put shut off caps in each side and ran ferrules in each side and connected the cable in inside of the box and then put a blanked out cover over top of it and that's where we can keep it oiled and not get our throttle stuck if you, do you get what i'm saying cool um so here's our choke cable this baby's tiny 
So we got to make a longer choke cable, throttle cable, as well as a reverse cable. Sorry, this is a reverse cable. That's what that is. Sorry. Uh, the, but the choke cable is just as short. Anyways, we uh, found out on eBay you can buy a build your own cable kit. It's like 20 foot of cable. Comes with the inner cable, the external housing, and all kinds of fittings that you can solder on. So unfortunately, it ain't going to be here until tomorrow or the next day. But we did wire up. If my lovely assistant will come over here and show this setup, we did wire up the. This is the original four wheeler um, little switch that went on the handlebars. So I just had taken two pieces of flat stock, drilled some holes, screwed it on it, and that blocks the hole so water won't get inside. And we will fill that up with some type of silicone. So we have a key switch, a new four wheeler key switch. We got a reverse and neutral light. It is in neutral right now. I just haven't hooked up these lights. That's what I'm gonna do after this video. But, and the starter solenoid is almost bad. It'll work sometimes, won't other times. So right now, it's just messed up. So I'm gonna buy a new starter solenoid, but headlight switch works, but we haven't ordered headlights for this thing. And Daniel built that beautiful shifter. And uh, well, that that's a Honda Civic shifter. And he used Go Power Sports 3 8 um tie rods and ran them back to the uh to the engine bent them up looks really nice and it has a bunch of adjustability to it since it's tie rods you can move stuff in and out and uh works really good he did that while i was running this main harness up front so now on the next video you're gonna see us make all the throttle cables and uh i'm gonna finish this wiring off camera like loom it all make it look nice and we just got to hook up i actually started it last night and she runs good. This uh, this four wheeler engine, when you shift it, it don't want to. So you manually have to pull the gear, the shifter back, like into the um, stationary position it's supposed to be in. So when you shift it, you got to kind of pull it back home. Uh, so I'm guessing there's a spring or something in the transmission that's worn out, broke, stretched, something. So I have to fix that too. But uh, she's getting pretty excited. And we never showed you the suspension. So we showed you us mounting the shock way up there way too soft we doubled two shocks up that didn't work so then we put this single one and it actually works really good i'll show you like it's even got side to side flex and bushings give but uh i mean that thing is sweet oh yeah so it's actually gonna work really well you gotta think i'm a fat daddy it's made for kids so it's gonna work out really good so on the next episode you'll see us button this thing up and finally route it and then later we'll extend the axles and put hydraulic disc brakes on the rear but make sure to check out the links in the video description uh we used a bunch of go like our go power sports tie rods are the best to use for shifter linkages on these things um 3 8 is plenty strong enough so uh check out the links we got our brakes we're putting hydraulic rear disc you can see that has a drum in the tire a mechanical drum we're going to be getting rid of that and putting a single disc from Go Power Sports. Also, check out the events page on rbgcarts.com where you can find out uh, about our events when we're having meetups and you can pre order tickets. Um, and there's perks to pre ordering. I don't know what they are, Becca came up with them. So let us know what you think about this hog in the comment section below. And uh, we'll see you on the next one where we'll finally get to ride it. See what she'll do, baby. We love you guys and God bless.